Alright, if you watched my previous video on Beyond Good and Evil, you'll know that I tried taking Mark Brown's Game Maker's Toolkit level design maps and applied them to the game to try to better understand its level design. As a tool, they are excellent, and it'd be great to apply them to Hollow Knight as well. But we have a bit of a challenge. The graph that Mark Brown came up with was specifically designed to tackle Zelda dungeons. Zelda dungeons are contained experiences, lasting no more than a few hours. They are digestible in a single sit-down. There's a clear beginning to end progression with detours for the players to navigate. But in a game like Hollow Knight, things are a bit more tricky. One of the staples of a Metroidvania-styled games are their large, sprawling, interconnected maps. Essentially, the game is all just one huge map. Sure, there are clearly defined regions, but there are so many connections between each area and different paths of progression that you won't be completing them one by one. This game necessitates backtracking. Nowhere is this made more clear than the starting area, Forgotten Crossroads. You'll find many possible paths in all directions blocked with no obvious way to proceed. It's only as you progress in the game and unlock new abilities that these pathways become accessible to you. And that's just considering the main required route to beat the game. There are many optional rooms, areas, secrets that you might never even see in your playthrough. And there are shortcuts going everywhere. So how exactly can we capture all of this in a graph? Do we stuff the whole world into one graph? Well, that could quickly become chaotic. But how do we convey the need to explore different areas and backtrack split across different maps? Okay, so I have a possible solution I'm going to try out. I'm going to simplify the progression of the game to only three things. Boss fights, abilities, and main objectives that go into beating the game. Abilities and objectives are organized into locks, represented by squares, and keys represented by diamonds. A square lock is some obstacle that you cannot get past without the required key. So for instance, there could be a platforming section that you can't do without the required ability. Once you get that ability, you can now proceed. Locks and keys will be color-coded based on the area that the key is found, so you can get an idea of where you had to go to get each thing. And I'm only going to roughly lay out the progression of each area. Also, I'm basically only going to cover the most bare-bones routes. No secrets, no training requirements, just what's the bare minimum you need to do to beat the game. So, after a lot of planning and designing, this is the graph I came up with. Now, this graph isn't perfect. I did my best to go through the game and try to remember what abilities and things I needed to do to get to each area, but it's possible I made a mistake somewhere. Also, like I said, this is not exhaustive. Just generally, what's the flow of a typical playthrough? This could probably even be stripped down further with other shortcuts that I don't know about or forgot, skipping the need to get some abilities. But for the purpose of exploring Hollandus level design, I think this is adequate. So I think you can get a good idea of how complex our exploration through this game is going to be. You are constantly needing to use abilities found elsewhere in the game to pass obstacles. Probably the first few areas are the most straightforward. Forgotten Crossroads, to Green Path, to Fungal Wastes. But as you go, more and more paths open up to you. One of the main things that obstruct your way is this key into resting grounds. You need to get this in order to complete your main objectives in the other areas of the game, signified by the stars. And once you complete these three objectives, you can just end the game. It's worth noting that this isn't actually communicated to you. You need to essentially discover all these objectives on your own. The biggest helping hand you get is late in the game when a character marks on your map three places to go, but you still need to eventually find this tool in the resting grounds to complete them. One other thing to note is the shop that you can unlock in the starting area. This allows you to purchase a few things that can give you earlier access to some places, like crystal caverns. Though, actually, you might need ability B for this too, I'm not sure. But regardless, this is locked behind a pretty steep paywall, so while it appears you can get here very early, in practice it's not practical until later. For comparison, here's one of the graphs I made for Beyond Good and Evil. This was a more complicated level, but I think you'll agree it's child's play compared to Hollow Knight. So I don't think you're going to surprise you by this point when I say that Hollow Knight's level design is simply excellent, and exploring this world is a great experience. 